So yeah, this is a continuation of uh, the live stream I was doing with uh, the Cantonese language. I just wanted to show you guys this. So this is the page I was reading off of, and you can see, if I zoom in, you can see it says Cantonese at the very top. And you can see this is Wikipedia, but you know, on some things Wikipedia is a good source. So you can't knock it until you've, uh, you know, given it a fair shot. So yeah, there's different names of Cantonese, like Canton speech, Guangzhouwa, or Guangzhouwa. Yeah, Guangzhouwa, that's it. Sang Sing Wa, Bak Wa, or Guang Fu Wa. Guang Fu Wa, that sounds funny. In Hong Kong and Macau, as well as among overseas Chinese communities, the language is referred to as Guangdong speech or Canton province speech. Yeah, Guangdong Wa or Chinese. Jung Jung Man <laughs> or, Yeah, Jung 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 Man, yeah, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but that's uh That's interesting just simply known as Chinese <laughs> Jung Jung Man <laughs> So Guangzhou became the cultural center uh, and Cantonese emerged as a prestige variety of UA Chinese and the port city of Guangzhou on the port on the Pearl River Delta became the largest port in China with a trade network stretching as far as Arabia. Wow. Specifically the mutual mutually intelligible speech of Sam Yap or San Yi. The three counties of Guangzhou, namely the historical counties of Panyu, Nanhai, Shunde, came to be heralded as a standard. Cantonese is also used in the popular Yueo, Muyu, and Nanyin folk song genres, as well as Cantonese opera. As Guangzhou became China's key commercial center for foreign trade and exchange in the 1700s. Well, that's boring. Who cares about the 1700s? Let's get to more recent. As a significant proportion of the entertainment industry in China migrated to Hong Kong in the earliest decades of the 20th century, the Hong Kong-based entertainment industry underwent a transformation to suit overseas as well as domestic audiences. With the bifurcation of the film industry into Cantonese and Mandarin, the use of Shiguan accent of Guangzhou as a conservative prestige accent of standard Cantonese was maintained in mass media, with films from 1930s making prominent use of it. However, during this time, many phonological changes can be, can be detected indicating the change from early Cantonese to modern Cantonese. I know that's kind of boring. I said, let's, let's get more interesting, but there's definitely some interesting stuff with Hong Kong film. Standard Mandarin had, had been heavily promoted as a medium of instruction in schools and as, as the official language, especially after the communist takeover in 1949, which is what I said. Meanwhile, Cantonese has remained the official variety of Chinese in Hong Kong and Macau, both during and after the colonial period. The official languages of Hong Kong are Chinese and English as defined by Hong Kong Basic Law. The Chinese language is made of varieties of which Cantonese is one. Given the traditional prominence of Cantonese within Hong Kong, it is a de facto official spoken form of the Chinese language used in Hong Kong government and in all courts and tribunals. It is also used as the medium of instruction in schools alongside English. 
A similar situation also exists in neighboring Macau, where Chinese is an official language alongside, alongside Portuguese. That's interesting. I should actually cover the Portuguese language in Macau. It's uh, mutually intelligible with the Hong Kong dialect, with some minor differences in accent, pronunciation, and vocabulary. So yeah, I'm probably going to do a video on, on Portuguese and Macau and also Hong Kong films. So yeah, well, I just wanted to show you guys that. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Or can enjoy it as much as you can. Uh, now I said I'll see you, you know, next time. Last, last time, but you know, I'll see you again. Take care.